what are the things you've learned right reflect upon your experiences right <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Sheldon in Science. I'm Sheldon and I'm in science. It's been a while, but it is application season and I always thrive in this season. So I wanted to today share with you actually looking at my personal statement for my PhD application at Francis Crick, just because I know that in the time frame of most applications for STEM related subjects, Francis Crick is one of the earliest deadlines. I think it's this year, the 10th of November, which is a Thursday, if I am if I'm corrected um so yeah I'm going to share with you guys uh the actual personal statement that I wrote for my application um just a bit of background to who I am for those who are new hi I'm Sharon I'm now a second year PhD student at Cambridge University and about two years ago maybe three years now I was applying um for different places stem related subjects working with stem cells um and trying to understand you know developmental related questions at different places um, and I applied to the Crick and I got through to interviews and was also offered a position but I ultimately chose a AstraZeneca funded PhD um, scholarship um, at Cambridge which will be in another video I'm going to have the whole spiel literally like from me applying to actual interviews um, because when I applied it was still Covid time so I was able to cheekily um, get in some actual real time interview stuff anyway that's not the focus of today's video today's video is focusing on what i wrote for my personal statement so just a bit of um, background for those who don't know i'm sure you do because if you're wanting to apply to quick you should know this i mean that's like literally the first thing is that you scour the web page and understand what is expected of you now they've given they've given us a prompt so compared to other applications that i did um around this time Francis Crick actually gives you more words to really like talk about your past experience. So one thing that I noticed with their application is that they really wanted, there was emphasis on your past research experience. So they had like a section where they were like, okay, please list any research experience that you have either as part or outside of a university deg degree course starting with your most recent and give details and there was like a limitation of 400 words per experience now in my case my background by the time i applied i had three major experiences there was one that i did during my um during my undergraduate degree in the third year of my biochemistry course at king's and then the second one was when i stayed on to do an integrated master's degree at king's also and then my third one was was my position as a research assistant in Cambridge so I was really able to capitalize on this kind of you know this this ability to talk about my experience each of them in detail and then there was a bit at the end separate to it that was more of a statement of purpose where they had a prompt so again I will show all of this in detail so now let's just switch on to the screen okay so this is um, as I said I've got here my 2021 PhD Francis Crick research experience and personal statement um, and as I was mentioning before the first part was we had this prompt to list any research experience that you have either as part or outside of a university degree course starting with the most recent include details of the host labs the supervisor the date a brief description of the project and your work in the project um, and we had a maximum of 400 words for each so I um, did my most recent first so on here it's um, ordered in the way that is the 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 furthest away is listed first but on the actual application form I made sure to have talked about at that point my ongoing experience so what I'm going to do is just kind of go through this and then talk about you know the things that you want to try and get across when you're talking about your experiences because one thing that I've learned majorly is you want to reflect on your experiences you don't want to just be like oh I did this and I did this and I did this but be like, okay I did this I learned this I got this skills and actually building on this skills that I learned I was able to then you know do something more independently in my um in my next placement in my next experience I was able to just take more initiative and just you know achieve things on a quicker pace Anyway, so here I've written here that um, my first research, my first research experience was as a summer intern at Claudia Linker's lab. So here I am literally hitting the prompt they've given me, given details about 
the person that I worked with and the place that I worked at. And then for my extended research project during the third year of my degree. The focus of the lab is to elucidate the mechanisms of the underlying um, migration, so underlying the migration and differentiation of neurocrest cells. And they had recently discovered and validated the presence of three subpopulations of trunk neurocrest cells, leader, follower, and pre-migratory cells. Now with this, I'm given literally a setup to, okay, what is the lab focused on? What At what state am I entering the lab? And then that gives a good kind of um, foundation to and good transition context to what my project is going to be and what my project might be adding to the pro to the overall status of the lab. And then I go on to talk about my project. So my rotation project was part of a larger project that aimed to find an exclusive molecular marker to distinguish between leader and follower trunk neurocrest cells. Um, the candidate marker that I tested was N. MMP17B, a, mat a matrix metalloproteinase, which catalyzes the breakdown of the ECM and enables neural crest uh, to carve out their roots during development. So here I'm given a brief background, a brief breakdown to what is the overall aim of my project. And it's nice that I mentioned that it was part of a larger project because I think that kind of insinuates that, yes, I'm working independently within my own project, but because my project in itself is part of a larger project, then that means I'm going to have to be interacting, working with other members in the lab. Metalloproteinases are markers for migratory cap capability and coupled with previous data of the extensive migratory cap capability of the leader cells, we hypothesize that this population exclusively expresses the MMP MMP17 transcript. So again, this compared to my other um, applications is the most in detail I gave about my project right because I had the space to in other applications that I did which you can see in other videos I never went into this level of detail but I, this is why I say this is why I make the point that with Francis Crick they make that emphasis on really understanding and really giving you the space to demonstrate your scientific knowledge by talking about your scientific experience your practical experience like don't just tell me oh i did this and i did this why were you doing it right so here uh, hopefully you can understand how i have really given set set up a a context for why we have this hypothesis i've given i've described you know what this protein is i've described that it's able to break down ecm i've described that you know it's in the location that we're looking at in, in context of ecm and extracellular matrix proteins you get what i mean so the next the next paragraph i've done here is then to describe my time in the lab so the first paragraph was saying okay this is why i'm doing this this is this is the stage that the lab was in now this is what i contributed to the lab so during my time in the lab, I learned lab techniques such as PCR, gel electrophoresis and bacterial transformation. And I became proficient in zebrafish husbandry, breeding and embryo manipulation, so staging them. I utilized a transgenic zebrafish line that enables exclusive labeling of neurocrest cells and used techniques such as whole mount in situ hybridization and anti-RFP staining to probe the spatio-temporal expression of these proteins at different points within the first 24 hours of zebrafish development. So this is literally like such a, a niche breakdown of exactly what I am doing, right? And then I've just said, okay, I've demonstrated what my um, findings were. Okay, we had this hypothesis that it might be exclusive, but actually our my results show that it wasn't. So there's this follow through where I've set up, okay, what are what are the aims? What are the objectives? What are the questions? What are we trying to address in this project? How have we done that? I've described some of the techniques that I've used, right? And key to this project, because I was working in the zebrafish model, was to talk about some of the things that I did with zebrafish, you know, husbandry, breeding them, setting up and um, getting eggs manipulating the embryos because those, those are those are the what i work primarily with and then giving the results additionally previous lab data suggested a size a cell cycle dependent regulation of migration induction i was interested so hopefully you see here that i show my initiative i showed that okay i had a research interest whilst i was in this lab and i chased it up I was interested in finding out if autin cell cycle would inhibit the migratory state of trunk, the trunk neurocrest cells. Hafidicolin, a fast-acting S-phase inhibitor of the cell cycle, was used. I incubated embryos from 10 to 22, 22 hours post-fertilization, then fixed and processed them for 
um, hormones into tribalization of this particular protein. I observed a particular percentage of drug treated embryos showed halted migration. Okay, so then I showed a follow through, right? So I have my next question. I have I've shown how I've done it, and then I've shown what the the findings were, and I've mentioned this bit. Okay, well, my approach in the time that I had was actually limited and if I had more time I would have been able to do this approach so again here I'm reflecting that I've not just done, I've not just done this project and just been like passive I've actually been actively thinking about what I was doing in my time in the lab and also being aware of like, okay I can use this approach but I can also use this approach depending on the priority of time or you know how sensitive we want certain things to be you would go for one approach compared to another and it's good for you to show this on paper and then here I have a more of a reflective um, aspect where I'm like, okay, my time here gave me more practical experience. I was able to gain independence over my project, train other summer students, basic lab techniques and contribute to the driving, to drive in the, 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 the uh to drive in the direction of their projects so this is me showing that okay in my time here bear in mind this is not just me as a summer intern but also me doing my extended research project so you know comp compiling my time as a summer research pro um, summer research student as well as a rotation student i was able to learn so much that i can also contribute to how other people in the lab who came newly to um their development of their techniques the development of their skills so I think that's one thing that's very important to try as much as you can to end on is, okay, what have I learned from this, right? So in addition to talking about the project, you know, follow through, what were the questions, what were the, um, how did we address it, what were the results, reflect on it, but then also reflect on the experience in itself. Yeah? Okay, we'll move on to the next one. So the next one was about my master's year. Now, just a bit of a, um, uh, just to let you know, so this, pro this project actually, um, got me a publication as a second author so my contribution to the project allowed me to you know you know be on the paper now this is something that if you if you have that a, a, if you have that option talk about it right talk and then really like draw into what were your roles doing during the project so this is what I wrote, wrote about my master's year. So in my master's year, I explored a different field of developmental biology in the lab of Professor Simon Hughes at King's College London. My project studied the function of RNA binding proteins, LARP6A and LARP6B, on zebrafish muscle development. A published study indicated that LARP6A function in muscle differentiation, with data showing that its misregulation resulted in the reduction of slow twitch muscle fibers and somite disorganization. The lab wanted wanted to identify specific functions by generating mutants using CRISPR and Talens. Now, with this one paragraph, what I've done is given a background to what the pro what the lab is about. What do they focus on, right? What are published studies that the lab is trying to address? Again, given that context, given that background to what was happening in the lab before you joined, right? And that kind of s establishes sets up set up um knowledge of what you're going to be potentially adding to the lab through your project and then what i've then mentioned here because again i guess I, i'm not lucky but i was fortunate enough to work in a lab that uses this techniques at that time of course crispr now in the field is widespread right almost i don't know any lab that doesn't use it but by me mentioning this again in the first in the first paragraph is showing that okay i have experience working with this i know about these things i have used them in practice to some extent now, again, I go for it to give give background to what what was already established in the lab when I joined. And again, I just want to stress that I think this is actually going to be quite unique to this type of application. It's not something that I noticed in any of the applications that I did in during my time. And this was like now two years ago. So I applied in 2021. Okay, so when I joined the lab, lab 6A and lab 6B, zygotic and maternal sorry zygotic and maternal zygotic mutants were already generated and analyzed there was no muscle phenotypes observed but a maternal effect phenotype which was tichorians was observed in the offspring of lab 6a mutant females therefore my initial aim was to generate maternal zygotic double mutants the level of 
animal husbandry required me to improve my organization and record keep keeping skills to keep on top of the numerous crosses so we're going to stop here for a second so here instead of me saying oh i learned how to you know um make fishes again i've already mentioned that in something else now i found a different way to talk about it but actually what i've now done is i've built upon a skill that i learned previously in a different lab but i've showed, shown how i've had to almost go a step le a step higher right i said okay i have this aim now to generate this music something that i've not done before so that's new to me but the level of animal husbandry that i have to do with these fishes is another level to what i did in my previous lab right but in addition to it being another level it meant it meant that i had to then improve these skills so by me saying it required me to improve the skills i am already saying that okay I already had these skills but now I have had to go another level to develop them even more. I made careful observations on the progeny between 0 to 5 days post fertilization looking for altered phenotypes such as abnormal swimming um, activity, malformation of tail, heart or yolk sac, tail curvature or, length, or change in length of embryo. Now I'll be honest when I was writing this I was on the fence on whether or not I should be so comprehensive with the observations that I made but I realized that actually each thing that I was mentioning required really that level of attention to detail right so one thing that that this is true hopefully stressing is that i'm doing a thing where i'm showing not telling i'm not just saying oh i i found this right but i'm like okay i did careful observations by looking at this 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 and this if i just said i did careful observation and i found that there was no change i've missed out this level of detail that could actually already justify give rationale be evidence to what i'm claiming right okay i did careful observations but these are the things that i looked at i looked at tail curvature i looked at change in length of embryo and one thing to note is i mean for those who have this who have worked with several fish is that each of these observations requires something different right if i'm looking at swimming activity it means that i would have had to like put the put the fishes in some sort of anesthetic and observe them for a specific amount of time if i'm looking at my formation of the tail or yolk sac it means that i'm doing stuff under the microscope looking very minutely okay i see that you know that the heart chamber of this fish is you know twice as big as one on the other tail curvature again making that observation skills really looking down um really sitting down to observe these different things or change in length of embryo means that i would have had to take pictures of these fishes and then move on to a different system and then you know actually do measurements so that's why i felt like i had to be so comprehensive in the different things that i was looking at next comparative analysis revealed them to be indistingu indistinguishable from their wild type and heterozygous siblings so again i've now shown okay i'm not just analyzing my my mutants i'm analyzing the wild type i'm an analyzing the heterozygous siblings with all of these things so just imagine that like I had not, you know, given this detail and I've just gone from, oh, my aim was this and then I analyzed them and I saw no difference. I would have missed out on this almost like, you know, implied meaning of how in-depth I've gone in my observations. To look specifically at the muscle phenotype of maternal zygotic double mutants, I prepared embryos for fo confocal imaging after immunohistochemical staining of slow muscle fibers and observed no muscle defects compared to wild type siblings. So again, instead of me just saying, "Oh, I did this and I saw no no um, no um, difference," I'm saying, "Okay, what were the techniques that I used?" Right here, I'm name dropping a, 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 a machine that I've worked with, which is a confocal microscope. But I've then also add that, that okay, before I did the imaging, I had actually done some immun immunochemical staining, meaning that I've meaning that I'm aware, I'm, I I understand how this protocol works, right? And I've given details, not not just be like okay, I've just done staining of these fibers, but I've actually looked at okay, what are the what are the similarities, differences? What am I what are, I'm looking specifically at the muscle fibers, not just the muscle fibers, the slow muscle fibers. So it really is that level of detail you want to try and go into. I observed the maternal effect in lays from maternal zygotic double mutant females. They laid eggs with even tighter corian than single mutants. I measured the corian diameter of lays from females of gen different genotypes and carried out statistical analysis that showed a significant reduction in the corian size of embryos spawned from mutant females versus heterozygotes and wild type females. So again, if anything, I'm really just repeating myself, but I'm now showing that 
I have used different approaches, different observations, different techniques to come to the same conclusions. And you you understand by the time I make a reflection um in in later um stages that i've shown evidence of this right that for a specific project i came to the same conclusion to the same result but i've used different techniques to come to the same results okay i analyze the protein composition of koreans using i analyzed the per protein composition of koreans using ses page analysis and prepared samples for mass spectrometry during which i had to develop and optimize a method that would more efficiently dissolve the koreans and better isolate key proteins so here i'm showing that okay whilst i was at in this project there were some things i had to optimize so not everything was perfectly there for me but this is also showing that okay i'm good phd material because i've not just been in a project where everything is already designed to work i've had to then gone through troubleshooting optimizing now the last paragraph here is really about reflecting on the whole experience as 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 a unit right i learned that research is meticulous and i came to appreciate the importance of using multifaceted methods to answer scientific questions a key a crucial skill to address key concept within the field of developmental biology so here i'm reflecting on okay i know that research is meticulous i've had to observe in detail all of these different phenotypes in different genotypes of fishes right and I've had to use multi-faceted methods, use different methods to come to the same conclusions. I have evidence that shows that. So when I make the statement, it's not that I've just drawn it out of the hair. I have shown that from my description in the earlier paragraphs. And then one thing I've done is tie this in to the field that I'm hoping to do my PhD in. So it's really just kind of like tying everything together that yes, I'm, I mean, my project was in developmental biology, but it's something that you can do. Yes, you might have a project that is in sli a slightly different field, but you can be like, okay, but fundamentally, the principal skills that I've gained from this is something that I can apply into any, any aspect of research. And then here was like, you know, my flex a little bit. Overall, my commitment and major con contribution to the project earned me second authorship on a paper published in development and i gave the doi link for that so that they can look at it right and in that way it's almost like giving another level of evidence of like what i've described here you can see that in person by yourself when you read the paper and it's given me the confidence that i can produce high quality lab work now i personally really like this because it's like it's really showing a good reflection because it's one thing for you for you and yourself to know that okay when i once I've learned, once I've been taught something, I know that I can produce good work, right? I know that the, the data I'll present at lab meeting when I'm in your lab, I have thought about it. I have done the, I've done the whole like, you know, thinking of like, okay, do I trust this data? How was a statistical, you know, um, analysis that, and how how powerful is this data, right? That I can have that level of reasoning before I do, I go to present that work. I think that's something that is quite nice to add in there. That yes, the piece of work I have the evidence that what I have done is good because it is published. But me in myself internally have the confidence that I can produce good work. Okay, so now let's move on to my most recent experience before I started my PhD. <laughs> so yeah this has been my uh my own <laughs> my own um personal statement and talk about and rehash of my um past experiences um let me know if you have any questions um and yeah good luck for application this season remember that it I think the 10th of November um, and then I think I'm gonna have like a series um, for Francis Crick so I'll, I'm gonna have a separate bit where I talk about you know the application um, the interview round because one thing to point out is that if you are called back for interview there's actually like a pre-interview I'm gonna leave it there so y'all should wait for the next video so I give you more information about what this pre-interview is anyway thank you so much for watching this video if you have any questions put them down below don't forget to like comment subscribe and you know show your girls some love and I'll see you in the next one Bye.